All right, Coach, I think everybody's ready on this end whenever you're ready to start. Okay. Uh, starting, just recapping uh, the game and the win over Clemson. You know, very proud of uh, our team and our staff and thankful uh, to them for, you know, their ability to commit and reinvest in spite of uh, the failure we had the previous game. And, uh, you know, disappointment coming out of the Duke game would be the biggest understatement ever for me. And so we had a very heartfelt, transparent meeting uh, as a team, as a staff after that loss. And to me, you know, winning or losing matters. But what matters a lot to me is how hard we play and, and how hard we fight and how tough we are and uh, how dedicated we are to the team that uh, you chose to be on, that you chose to coach. And so I thought this week was a, a great response. And uh, our identity at this school is is about – playing hard, playing tough, and playing together. And I'm proud of the guys, the way they did that for four quarters. They put it on tape, and uh, we played clean, you know, on top of it. And just plus two turnover margins, zero pre-snap penalties on offense or defense. And defensively gave up zero explosive plays for scores. Uh, kids battled uh, and fought and believed, and they showed grit. And we're learning and we're growing, you know, and, and there's a lot to work on, a lot we need to get better at. But it was great improvement <clears throat> and uh, meaningful. You know, on offense, I thought, you know, obviously KC is a huge spark, very explosive player. Uh, it's impressive to me. I can't say enough about how he's able to do so much uh, as a freshman to play in the slot. You know, and this offense is a lot. Uh, there's a lot goes on in there. Robert's offense as a slot receiver, but then to be able to get into the backfield and run the football, uh, to be able to go outside and play the way he did. Uh, I thought, you know, overall, we, we um, played hard, played together, you know, played against a good defense. And, and although we didn't have as many points as we wanted, we played cleaner and played harder. Uh, we didn't beat ourselves uh, with pre-snap things and, and drops, things like that. Didn't have a drop until that last drive. And Obviously, that did hurt us there. We capitalized in the red zone. Um, you know, negatives, you know, gave up too many plays in the backfield that we can correct. And they were in our backfield eight times. We were in theirs nine. So you had two defenses really uh, getting after it um, that way. You know, I think just being more efficient, you know, um, getting more first downs, being efficient on the plays that gain us the four yards or more. You know, defensively, two takeaways uh, and a fourth down stop at the end. Constantly pressured their quarterback and, and uh, played in their backfield a lot. Didn't give up an explosive for score, and, and Peyton Wilson's touchdown was an ex, uh, expletive great play. Uh, I think Peyton's playing better than anybody uh, in college football at his position, and he's obviously a spark, and he's fine. Uh, excited about the news on him. You know, he was sore after the game, but – good news and he'll be back this week uh, defensive negatives you know there's just you get into coverage situations uh, there's always route concepts and things you can play better and you know down the field intermediate underneath and so we'll continue to work on different things with our guys and you know, we had some guys out of position once Peyton went down we, we moved some guys around a linebacker and so they were playing not out of position but playing where they hadn't practiced some of those schemes and I think that showed up a little bit but uh, really impressed just with how hard we played. <clears throat> you know, on special teams, Braden um, continues to kick the ball well, and Colin Smith 100% on touchbacks on kickoff. They had zero return yards, which against Clemson, as we know, isn't easy to do. We always have talented returners. Uh, I thought Anthony Smith emerged as a missile on our SWAT team, had a really nice play covering a punt. So, you know, excited about the win and, and uh, thankful, you know, to get a win like that on homecoming for my 100th meant a lot just personally and thank the team and staff for that. You know, I do think um, in the post game, uh, regarding my comments, I felt, you know, it was very important to stand up for our program and for our team. And uh, I do feel that duty uh, and that responsibility as a head coach. And, and in the moment, my feelings were very raw and authentic. <laughs> And I have great respect for Steve Smith. You know, after the game, uh, he texted me and sent me a video uh, congratulating me on the win. And um, as a man, I thank him for that. You know, it takes a lot of humility 
uh, to do stuff like that, you know, and, and I know he was not trying to disrespect our program, even though that's how I felt. Uh, and I appreciate him for that and, you know, invited him to come down and spend time anytime he wants. And hopefully he'll do that. Come be on our sideline. He's a great player for the Panthers, great player for Utah and a great representative of the game. And I think him being on our sideline, feeling the energy of our fan base would be awesome. So hopefully we'll get that done. Now, furthermore, uh, you know, as I stated in my press conference after the game, NC State has a lot of great sports and football is one of them. And supporting my program uh, and doing that was my intentions. And that's what I was doing, standing up for a football team. And uh, I know in the aftermaths, things sometimes land differently with certain people. And, you know, because of that, I did call Coach Keats and Kevin's a great friend. I love the guy and uh, definitely I have so much respect and ad for, mad, admiration, not just for him, but for his program. And that's what makes NC State different. You know, I've worked at a lot of schools and uh, our admin, our administration, our fans. Um, it's unique, you know, to be at a school where you can go to a football game, a men's basketball, a women's basketball, a, a baseball game, a wrestling match, et cetera, and have a sold out crowd, you know, uh, and be able to cheer on a national champion across country and track and field and swimming. So it's impressive, you know, and it's rare uh, to be at a school like that. And, and so, yeah, it does irk me when people label us as a one sport school because we're not, we're not. And I think the proof is in what I just said, you know, the, the ability to be productive in so many sports and, um, uh, it's a well-rounded athletic department full of competitive winning teams. And since I am the football coach, I'm going to defend my post for football. And that's what that was and will continue to be. You know, I think uh, this week is another great opportunity to play another really good football team in Miami. And uh, they're athletic. Uh, they're very talented. They've always been that way. Um, they're playing hard. Um, when you watch them on offense, they're fast, which is you'd expect. They're deep at the running back position. I think their offensive coordinator does a really good job. Their offensive line is big and, and well coached. And the receivers, as you would expect, are playmakers. You know, their defense is led by their, their defensive line. And they've got a freshman defensive lineman. 44 Bain is one of the best freshman D linemen I've ever seen. He is really playing well. A uh, guy that you like watching, um, which he's not on their sideline, but it's going to be a great opportunity to play against another great defensive lineman. The DBs are, are guys that can run and tackle and cover. And so another great opportunity, great challenge, and uh, looking forward to it. Excited to have them here at night at Carter Finley. And uh, I know it'll be a great atmosphere. I know our fans will show up and help us. And we need your help. Uh, last week, phenomenal crowd noise when we needed it for our defense at the end of that game. That was big. And so, you know, just calling on you again to come be a part of winning a game, helping us win a game with your noise for our players and against theirs. And that's what this has to be for us to continue to grow as a program. Uh, lastly, just want to thank the media uh, on the call and, and off the call that have helped uh, cover and support Peyton Gibbs and, and her efforts and her family's efforts. It's been awesome seeing that and a lot of messages, emails uh, and letters coming our way, thanking us for that. But that's just the right thing to do. And and so I know they're going to continue to battle back where they're at um, in Florida to get her back on the sideline. But just thank you guys for doing that. You don't have to. I know you get to pick what you write about and cover. And, and so to be a part of a feel-good story when uh, it's not always that way means a lot to me. So thank you. Questions? Wait for that first hand, Corey Smith. Dave, obviously you just gave an update on Peyton uh, and his status. What does it mean to to have a player like that still healthy and, and know that you, uh, <laughs> you'll have him for, for the future moving forward? Yeah. Oh, man, it's so fun watching Peyton play. And, and um, I'm just thankful for him, first of all. You know, he's the one that's been through it uh, medically and, and put in the time, the effort, and the hours to play the sport. And it means the world to him. And you can see that in his play. And so we're thankful that he's healthy. Thank the Lord for that. And look forward to seeing him play again and uh, continue to do what he's doing. I mean, and I, I don't know if there's anyone in college football that's having the impact he is in the game. Um, 
I haven't seen it yet. I'm not saying I haven't seen a lot of good players this year. I have that guy that's just a wrecking ball out there and what he's doing in so many ways, his effort and energy and everything else, his leadership. So thankful that he gets to continue the journey with us. Thank you. Jaden. Hey Dave, you talked about the different areas that you want to see improve this week. Is there like one specific that you're highlighting above any others? You talking about on offense, defense, special teams, or just collectively? I would say collectively. You know, I'd like to just learn from what just happened. You know, I think I told him this uh, in the meeting, like we need to play like we lost the game. We need to practice like we just lost the game, you know, and I think just learning from the the outcomes of the weeks that we've had, uh, taking the information that we've gained through wins and losses, through adversity and through success and building on it, you know, and, and you shouldn't have to suffer to always learn the right way to do something, you know, and to me, that's the biggest area is just be able to look at, man, I, I really played well in this game. I played better. I played hard. Uh, what happened? You know, I had to go through a humiliating loss and, and practice a certain way. Well, okay, let's repeat that with a win. And that's the growth. You know, it's sometimes it's hard with these young people to, to get them to strain the way they need to all the time until you get them in a really adverse situation like we were in. And so I think it's just the growth of that, you know, taking success and, and failure, treating them the same when it comes to your preparation for a game. Noah? Kind of going off of that, has that been something you've noticed, I guess, with this team coming off of a win? Because, you know, you have a, you know, lost to Louisville, came back, had a win against Marshall, and then, you know, lost to Duke, come back for the win. Is that something you kind of noticed, or is it just kind of just be a trend or something like that? Yeah. I mean, obviously, that's what it looks like. Uh, I said this before, I, I did not see the performance coming that we, we had against Duke based on our practice. We practiced well that week. And so obviously uh, not well enough, but in years past, you could see it, you know, man, we weren't very clean this week and I would be really nervous. And that's not what I saw. I saw a team that practiced hard and was actually executing well and guys had energy and, you know, they weren't uptight uh, at the hotel. So, you know, I think sometimes it's just harder to read certain guys than others. This team, um, thing I like about them, man, they're resilient, you know, and I think they've learned a lot. And so, you know, whether it's a trend or not, we got four games left. I told them it was a five-game season. We're 1-0, and and we're going to put everything we got into this next one. Ethan? Hey, Coach, it seems like Robert Kennedy – had a great day in coverage, holding Clemson's leading receiver to, you know, just, I think, one intercept, one reception against them. Just how would you assess uh, his performance? Yeah, Rob's done a great job this year. He's been super consistent, works hard every day, goes about his work the right way. He's focused. He's not up and down. He's easy to coach. Um, he's here for a reason. He knows what his role is, and he's done it. You know, and each week there's little things that he's working on. And Coach Freddie, Autry Lindsay does a good job with him, narrowing down his focus onto those things. So excited for him. And then another challenge this week, I, one of Miami's best players is their slot receiver, number seven. He's a really good player. So be a great matchup. James? Dave, uh, you've talked about it before in the past, but uh, how important is game flow? you know, with this team and the ability to kind of get out, get out early and allow your defense to really take control of the game? It helps. Uh, it helps. helps a lot, you know, to have a little bit of a cushion. Um, we haven't had a lot of a cushion, you know, but it does help to be playing from ahead versus behind. Um, you know, we're still young. When you look at who's out on the field at times on offense, there's some young dudes out <clears> there <throat> playing and, you know, MJ's just in his second year still. And, you know, KC freshman, Kendrick Raphael, true freshman, you know. So you've got some youthful guys out there when it comes to that. But uh, I think the one thing that, you know, we really talked a lot about getting ready for this last game was just that in-play mentality of playing together and then breathe, next play. And 
let everything else go till we get to the sideline and just focus on what you can do and not let things compound because uh, that's where it gets hard. You know, you start having negative talk and you start thinking negatively because of something that might happen. Like they got good players at Clemson. They're going to beat you at times. And you just got to compete your butt off and go to the next play and win the next play. And then if you do that more times than they do it, usually the scoreboard is a collection of your wins individually over time. And so that's been our focus and it worked for us, you know, and I think we'll stay probably in that process, uh, getting ready for another great team with Miami. Aaron. Hey, Dave, um, I was looking at some defensive stats. Like you guys are in the middle of the conference and defense scoring defense and total defense. But if you look a little deeper, it's kind of things like number two in sacks, number three in third down conversions. Yeah, I guess stats never tell the whole story. What kind of what do you think is the maybe the top one or two things you guys as a coaching staff when you're looking at maybe is how your defense is playing that you point to and say this is this is what we need to be really good at. Well, the most important stat in defense is scoring defense. And so our goal is to get back into the top three in our league, top twenty in the country in scoring defense. Uh, the next most important goal is the number of takeaways that you force on defense. So, you know, can you keep points off the board and can you get the ball back? Uh, obviously, third down defense is getting the ball back as well. Our fourth down defense is getting the ball back as well. But, you know, those takeaways are big momentum plays. They're usually field position gainers, not always, but usually. Um, and so, you know, we're doing really well on third down defense, doing really well taking the ball away. Um, our disruption and, and chaos that we create throughout the game. There's a lot of plays in their backfield with sacks and tackles for loss, like you mentioned. And so now it's just eliminating big plays for touchdowns was a huge emphasis, and that happened last week. You know, you're going to give up some explosive plays. Clemson had, I think, eight in our game, but none of them were for touchdowns. And so now they had seven. None of them were for touchdowns. And that, to me, is what it's all about because, you know, you stop them, hold them to a field goal, they may miss, which you saw them miss one of them. Those are the things that matter, you know, and, and see if they're good enough against a defense like ours to keep grinding it out. And uh, that's where everything is, though, to me, um, scoring defense and takeaways. To follow up on that, is there, I mean, total defense, people talk about total yards. Do you guys, do coaches care much at all about that set? It doesn't seem like it tells a lot beyond just the yardage. Yeah, number. I think coaches care about everything. Um, but I agree with you. I don't think that stat equals wins like the other ones do. Corey? Dave, kind of a two-part question here. First of all, is there any – I may have missed it earlier, but is there any update on Trent Penix's status from last week? I know he didn't play in that game. And it seemed like there was a little bit more implementation of Juice Vereen in that game. Obviously, he did have the one drop, but just your thoughts on – getting him in the game and and where that tight end position stands right now. Hopefully we'll have Trent back. I'm not sure yet. Uh, they were testing him in the training room a little bit before I came up here. And so I haven't heard from our trainer yet, but hopeful, hopeful we'll have him. Uh, as far as juice. Yeah. I mean, we're continuing to develop him, try to get him, you know, reps where he can help us and he's growing, he's improving. Uh, obviously, I know he would love to have made that play there on third down. It's a good job by MJ throwing it with the blitz, and he just didn't have his head back for it quick enough. But he's a young player again, you know, out there. And sometimes when you play him, they're going to have some youthful mistakes and just got to get his learning curve to speed up a little bit. But he's working really hard. He's got a great attitude. and He's grown up a lot this year. He's got a lot of growth still. But from where he was at week one to where he is now, uh, he's maturing. And um, – just got to keep taking it one day at a time. Thanks, Dave. Yep. yep. Kind of talked about it after the game, but how impressive, you know, going back and looking at the film was um, Sean Brown and kind of step, stepping in for Peyton Wilson on that last drive. You know, he made five tackles on one drive at linebacker there. Yeah, I mean, he is a ball player, man. I mean, his football IQ is high. Um, you know, his attitude, his effort, his athletic ability, his toughness, it's its all exactly what you want. If I could go recruit 10 more of Sean Brown, I would. And uh, at whatever special team he goes on, he makes plays too. He's a playmaker. He's got a really bright future. Um, and he can do a lot, you know. He can play in the, in the back end, as you see. But 
the closer he gets to the ball, you know, whether he's blitzing or fitting the run, he makes plays. He's got a really long wingspan. He's strong. He's a good tackler, you know, and he's learning how to play faster and faster. Things are really clicking for him with his vision and what he's looking at. Brian Murphy. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. To go back to the Smith comments, I appreciate uh, um, it. Just got a couple of quick ones. Did, did he commit to coming to a game? And then how, how did you see the comments? Was that something you had been thinking about kind of all day? And then lastly, it, it seems like uh, you got state yeah. fans pretty fired up. Well, what kind of reactions did you get? I imagine it was overwhelmingly positive. Um, no, he hasn't committed yet, and I'm hopeful he will. Uh, he said when he gets back, he's traveling, that we'll connect and try to work some things out on when we could get him here. I don't know when that'll be. But that was a great conversation, like I said, for a guy with his accolades um, to just come on and congratulate us on the win. Say the coach didn't mean anything by it. I and mean, that means a lot. You know, there's a lot of people's egos that wouldn't allow him to say stuff like that. So I, I don't know him. And uh, for that to be our first conversation meant a lot to me. Um, as far as when I saw it, it was actually the last thing I saw leaving the locker room. And so I don't know why at the end of the game. I mean, you guys don't understand. Most people don't what it's like to coach a football game and go through three and a half hours of that. And you are mentally wiped. You know, I mean, it's a blowout and every every possible emotion you have. And, you know, in that moment, I felt like defending my team. I was irked by it. And uh, I don't know, sometimes things just happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but that's that's what, what happened right there. And again, my intentions were to protect this football team and stand up for it. No, nothing more than that. And uh, felt like I did that. I don't know. I'm not on social media very much, so I don't know what the response was. My sons told me it was good, but you know, it's like the, I tell people all the time, like when, when you speak, there's going to be a percentage of the country that thinks you're right. And a percentage that thinks you're wrong immediately. And that's just where we are right now. And so I know that that happens whenever I talk, there's going to be people that think I'm wrong and people think I'm right. And ultimately, you know, you have to do what you think is best and right for the group that you lead. And for me, uh, as the head coach of this football team, I'm going to stand up for 11 years of hard work and all the players that helped me do it and the coaches that helped me do it and the fans that believe in it. And so until they tell me I don't get to do that anymore, that's the kind of coach you're going to have. Your players fired up? They they talked to you about it at all? Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, it wasn't about calling out Steve in particular. I think we all agree he's a tremendous guy. It was more about just the statement itself. And um, like I said, man, this university is different. Like if you come around here in, in the winter time and for me, like I try to get to an Olympic sport whenever I can. And I'm always in awe. Like when you walk into a wrestling match or, you know, you go over to a baseball game, whatever, just how many people are there. Uh, I've been in universities where it's just not like that. I mean, it really is a one sport school in some places from a fan base standpoint, not from an effort or an attitude or a skill set with the teams. But some places don't have the, you know, on-site support that you get at NC State. And, and you know, we're in the, the the director's cup with all the different sports, how that adds up. So it just, you know, like I said, people can say what they want. It's just, you know, do your homework, know what you're talking about, be critical when that's what you should be. I mean, I no problem with people throwing darts at me after the Duke game. I earned it. You know, we didn't do a good job, and that falls on me. But when you look at the program and the university overall, you know, people have to understand what we've built as a program. And, you know, it started way before I was here. I mean, the success of this place, football, basketball, track, everything else has been going on a long time. Ethan. Coach Clemson blitzed MJ Morse pretty constantly. Just how do you think he handled that pressure? I mean, obviously he didn't turn the ball over. So just how do you think he handled that blitzing? Yeah, I mean, it starts there. We're getting a lot of pressure, period. And I think, you know, with – with uh, going back to Notre Dame, I mean, we've been seeing blitz from everybody, and it's just kind of what it is right now. Um, MJ's doing some really good things at times. There's other times, you know, where things collapse on him pretty quick and got to get rid of the ball faster maybe than he wants. I thought he did a tremendous job on one of the third downs um, where he kind of moved around, backed up in the pocket, slid over to his left, and hit key on for a first down. I thought that was a really good job by the O-line and the running back uh, as well. But, you know, it's just the timing of all this and 
uh, continuing the, the chemistry, you know, with his receivers and just reps, reps, reps. You just keep working all that and know that we're going to keep seeing, you know, the things that we're seeing pressure wise. That's just how it is right now. We do the same thing. We're blitzing people all over the place. And you, know, you see it from Miami. They're a big pressure team. There's going to be a lot of that coming. Thanks. JC. Um, in honor of Halloween, we know you are a big George Brett guy. Yeah. Was there a Chiefs player growing up that you could have worn a Halloween jersey of one time or thought about? Because I don't think you've ever expressed a Chiefs player like you have uh, the affection to a George Brett. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, so two players that I loved with the Chiefs when I was a kid. And one of them's local, so that that'll be good. First uh, non-local was Derek Thomas, the defensive end, who was just a phenomenal pass rusher. I loved watching DT play. Uh, but Dino Hackett, you know, Dino Hackett, former Appalachian State linebacker, and um, had the privilege of meeting him actually in the off season. But uh, he was a middle linebacker for the Chiefs, and, and I, I think Bill Cower might have been coaching there then on defense when uh, Marty Schottenheimer was their head coach. But he had the big neck roll, you know, and uh, shoot all of us high school players in Kansas City uh, that everybody wanted to look like him. And he was mean. He was tough. And uh, so, yeah, you know, that was one of the guys that at a young age, watching those two guys play, I loved them. James. Dave, I just wanted to ask you real quick about uh, Jordan Poole. You were able to get him in some reps on the offensive side. It physically looked like he gave you a couple of good reps. Yeah, Jordan was a really good high school running back as well. And, uh, you know, he and I have talked throughout the season, just trying to find ways to utilize what he can do to help the team win. And uh, about two weeks before the bye week, he brought it up, you know, and I said, let's get to the bye and we'll, you know, sit down and talk some more about it. I don't want to spend time with the staff. And the last thing I want to do is move a guy. And it doesn't really help him from a depth standpoint. Um, so during the bye week, he got some reps there. You could immediately see his ability to help. Um, not just as a blocker, which is what you saw this weekend, but he ran the ball well in practice. He caught the ball well out of the backfield. And so now it's just getting him caught up in, you know, all the vernacular with Coach Goble and Coach and I. But I think it's a good move for him and for us. You know, he's going to bring value there. Uh, he adds a dimension uh, to the backfield, and he's really physical. And so it just gives us a running back that can go fill and fit like a linebacker um, or old-school fullback, but a guy that can run. You know, I mean, he's really got, if you watch that run, long run by KC early in the game, you can see him tracking him down the field. He can run. JB. Hey, Dave, sorry to get in here late. Uh, first and foremost, congratulations on getting your 100th career victory as a head coach. Um, but I wanted to uh, ask you as far as you kind of showing that side that you showed, you know, off of Steve Smith's situation and just kind of the trust factor that you gained off of having, you know, your programs back like that, you know, for players and fans and, you know, others who haven't seen that side of you or whatever, what, what, what kind of trust factor do you think you gained off of that or whatever when, when, when you show how much you love this program and how much you have this program's back for the future? You know, I don't know if I can answer that. I mean, you're asking me what other people think, and um, you probably know better than I do. You're reading their comments. But, you know, there just comes a point in time as a competitor where you're sick of it. And I was sick of it, you know, and so you can either stand there and take it or you can fight. And I've been asking our players to fight and fight and fight and told them I would. And I thought that was an opportunity to show that. And, and I know that's meaningful, you know, in the locker room, how it is outside the locker room. I really don't know. Um, and I'm not going to say I don't care. I do. I want people to respect what we do here, but it wasn't meant for them. It was meant for our team. And, like I said, for the 11 years of players that have helped me here uh, and given a lot, you know, there just comes a point in time where if something's said that's not true, it needs to be corrected. And that's it. Uh, looks like that's it for today. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, right. everybody.